I am Max, and this is Dango Duo, or rather Dango Singular. Welcome back to our coverage of the 2016 Fall Anime Lightnup. I'm here, and I'm ready to do my reaction on episode 3 of Isera the Last Witch. <laughs> There's a lot of baggage. We've been dealing with a lot of things these last couple of episodes, and... If you are following this long, if you are watching this and you, and you have seen the previous ones, and I recommend you do, then you already know how this is gonna go. I'm gonna tell you a really quick and easy summary of how this episode went. I'm gonna tell you what I liked, what I didn't like, and then I'm gonna jump in into the spoiler zone. And I'm gonna spoil everything about this episode. I recommend you go give it a watch so you know exactly what we're talking about. Link in the description down below, but, 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 but. We have a lot to cover, and I sure can ramble, so let's dive right in. Max! What happened in episode 3 of Isera the Last Witch? Well, the third episode of Isera the Last Witch uh, picks up from, we were, from where we left off in episode 2, following a battle that is very near to where our characters happen to be at this very moment. This episode follows from several points of view. In the midst of a com battle, uh, a clash between the Elistad and the Germanian forces. There you go, pretty simple setup. We have a nice war moment uh, as to what happens there. Well, we will talk about it in the spoiler zone. Before I get there, though, what did I enjoy about this episode, episode 3? Well, uh, again, if I have to be entirely honest, uh, the music for this anime is actually really good. Man, the, the music for the action se uh, sequences was actually really exciting, really fun. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm really looking forward for the soundtrack of this to eventually get released, as well as uh, the single uh, the single for the OPNED. I really want to get my hands on those, but apparently they don't come out until like November, even in Japan, so we will have to wait. As to the another thing that I particularly enjoyed, this episode is the first episode in this anime that actually feels like it takes place in a war situation. It actually feels like it takes place in World War II, uh, for once. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, which takes me to... What did I not like about this episode? Well, of, although it does definitely feel like a war story at last, uh, it suffers from having too many points of view. There are just too many points of view in this story, and it just cuts between them willy-nilly, and it does this thing where, like, you're in the middle of action, watching what's going on, being excited, enjoying it, and then it just cuts to what the Germanian generals are doing, which is not very exciting, because it's just them talking about making bets, and it feels really weak. It just feels really weak. It's one of those things where I would have preferred it had it just focused on one point of view, or a couple, and aside from, um, it, it's trying, it's definitely trying to feel more like a war story, but, but having five different points of view in a 23 minute, uh, episode, it's just not very effective. And aside from that, uh, it's a setup, so you have a nice bundle of inconsistencies, which I'm gonna talk about in the spoiler zone! Before I jump there, though, the question that everyone has been wondering, I've been wondering myself, am I gonna keep watching a setup? The answer, for the time being, is no. And I knew the answer for this was no, when I was chatting uh, with a Plaguesworth friend of the channel, uh, I live with him, and I was telling him about all the inconsistencies. And and he said offhand, uh, he said that it sounded a lot worse than Attack on Titan. And if you know me, if you know how I feel about Attack on Titan, you know that I I put I watched the entire first season of that. I didn't enjoy it. Trust me, I didn't enjoy it. Because uh, it's just so full of inconsistencies and just like tone problems. And I realized that three episodes in uh, in Isetta, I hated it way more than I hated an entire season of Attack on Titan, and I definitely do not like Attack on Titan. So I realized, you know what, I've suffered enough, I'll probably do a big, like, mega reaction to a bunch of episodes once we have a nice backlog. I'll probably watch episodes 4 through 6 and then tell you about them. I'm not gonna do weekly stuff, I kinda wanna watch uh, something else, go pick up something else um, <laughs> that won't have me pulling my hair at the inconsistencies. Talking about inconsistencies, the spoiler zone is about to begin, so uh, again, uh, if you have watched this far and, and you haven't seen the episode and it somehow makes you go, yeah, I wanna go watch it and see what Max is talking about, go do so because I'm about to spoil everything in 3, 2, one! There is so much in this episode. Not as much as episode two, let's be completely honest here, but there are a bunch of inconsistencies, of which I actually took a bunch of notes. Um, if I had to stop and, you know, re uh, reflect on these last three episodes, man, it's been a mess. <laughs> man, it's been a mess. And this episode here, 
it's trying, but it's still really messy. Like having five different points of view, it's so it's so problematic, especially when the episode is just 23 minutes long. You can do something like this in a, like an American style 45 minute uh, episode. You can do that more effectively, but when you're literally cutting between uh, Finet, the soldier kid, the German assholes, uh, the army people in the town, and then uh, Isetta is just it's just kind of all over the place, especially when you cut in the middle of action to go somewhere else. It's just not very effective. Uh, aside from that, uh, Isetta murders a ton of people in this story. Man! And she did react the first time she killed somebody in episode 2, but I feel like we're arri arriving at the good old superhero problem, or I guess a uh, super soldier problem of... Um, how many people does your character have to kill before you realize that they're probably not a good person, right? How many how many people do you have to murder before you save the world, am I right? Anyhow, that's a morality question that we're not gonna have to touch here for the time being. Let's go through the rest of the inconsist inconsistencies in this episode. So, going down my notes, uh, what was the point of having Isera make a point to say that she wasn't allowed to use magic? If she's gonna use magic at every chance that she's got? Like, I, I under, like, it just feels like fake pressure, like, fake, um, drama for the sake of fake drama is like, oh, she can't use her magic, except she's been using it from the very, like, the first shot of, of Isera that we saw in episode one is her flying, so I'm just kind of sitting here like, what was the point of saying no magic if you're gonna be using magic the entire time? Throughout, throughout this entire third episode, Fine is stone-faced, Fine is doing that whole, like, stone-faced, cold-blooded leader thing, where she's trying to, like, keep everyone alive and making choices and and even giving orders which seems a little weird considering that the that there is a general slash commander guy around her but anyhow so she's really stoic this entire episode and she's very strong about not letting Isera into the army which makes sense considering what she has said in the past and keep follow me up on this Fine is stone-faced the entire episode and suddenly at the end she just like cries and embraces uh, Isetta when she returns from fu killing all the Germanians, and I'm just sitting here like, where did this come from? Honestly, real talk, it just feels like the writers forgot about the whole gay baiting thing, and we're like, oh yeah, no, here's the two girls hugging and crying. There you go, there's a bone for you. Bitterness out of the way, there's a couple, uh, two more inconsistencies that are, well, one is an inconsistency thing, and the other one is just like, well, here we are at the problem with this entire setup, uh, and here it goes. Isera solves the problem all by herself, and she single-handedly like takes down an entire Germanian battalion, which is a problem. It's one of those things where it's like, like I can already feel where this is going because Isera is incredibly powerful, and even even though she's not trained to do this, even though she doesn't have her totally awesome badass. Uh, rifle, broom, flying, artillery gun thing, she's still murdering everybody, and, like, doing lots of damage, and single-handedly, again, taking down a whole battalion, which brings up the question, Isera can single-handedly uh, end this war. She has proven it, if she goes battalion by battalion, she will eventually end this war single-handedly. Where is the tension, then? And I can tell you where the tension is. The Germanians have their own witch, and it's gonna be a witch versus witch battle, there you go. It is the good old shonen problem of uh, having a, a main character who is so strong, the only way to make things interesting is to have the antagonist be the entire same power set, but 10% strong, so it's actually a challenge. Here we go, we're back again at the whole Eren Jaeger problem which I despised so much. Also, talking about things that are just very disappointing, remember how in the previous episode, Fine was going on about how witches are fairy tales and nobody believes in them, but in her heart she knew them to be true? Well, in this episode, we learn that there's like, I mean, we don't learn, somebody says that there's like a white, white witch story and there's a prophecy, and it's funny, because witches are not supposed to be known. Except the little soldier guy that we follow through knows about it, and then everyone around him knows about the legend. And it's one of those things where it's like, oh, it's a witch. Yeah, we all knew that this could happen. No one's gonna question the fact that there's a witch among our ranks now. It's just so awkward. It's one of those things where it's like, is nobody gonna question the fact that there's a witch next to you? No, 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 okay. This is not very well written. Now, before I tell you the basically the worst thing, Thing in this episode. Let me tell you a little bit of a um, visual inconsistency because I've been talking a lot about writing. Let's talk a little bit about the way this um, 
anime this place itself. Um, there's no way for me to say this without sounding stupid, so I'm just gonna say it right now. Why are the Germans shooting green lasers out of their guns? Now, this happens really early in the episode where you're looking from the point of view of a trench or something, and you suddenly see that fr the direction from which the German shots are coming from, instead of firing, you know, that nice, like, white bolt of light that is supposed to indicate a bullet flying at supersonic speeds, uh, instead it's a green laser. It happens once, and I took a screenshot of it, it's on the screen right now, and I thought, well, that's stupid looking. And then they just commit to it. You come at this point in which there are white bolts, which are just regular bullets, which I, I assume are from the good guys, and then green bolts from the bad guys, as though you need to, to point them out. And that is just so outrageously ridiculous. I don't even understand who thought this was a good idea. I don't understand what the purpose of this is. Almost like G.I. Joe levels of ridiculousness, where like the good guys fire blue bolts, the bad guys shoot red bolts, and I'm just sitting here like, why? Why not just have them all just be the same color, you know, like the way bullets actually are. But anyhow, that's one inconsistency, and it's really silly. You know what is the dumbest thing in this episode? Near the end, uh, Fine uh, wants to make sure that the people in the front lines know that uh, Isera is not actually a bad person, that she, she is on their side. And she decides to communicate this, uh, because there's uh, apparently no radio, no signal, and the only way by which she can communicate this is by Morse code. She gives a whole speech in Morse code. This is a problem. This is really bad. Because if you know how Morse code works, you know that saying, like, three sen sentences, an entire paragraph, is gonna take you, like, five minutes to relay that information, which is not very effective, especially considering that the anime makes it seem as though it takes two seconds to relay the whole message, and, oof. From my point of view, this just kind of, once again, highlights the whole issue, like, the problem that I have with this anime, that it just feels that, like, it just feels to me that nobody ran this script by an editor, like someone who would actually pick it up and go, why? Why Morse code? Why? We already sh we already made it a point to say that there's like radios here, why not just have a radio? Like, is that, it, do you really think that it takes away from the story to have her say it into like, a, uh, a microphone as opposed to have it be Morse code, especially when Morse code doesn't work like that. Uh, it's just bad, it's just bad. It's one of those things where, like, I came into this anime with so much hope, wanting wanting to be surprised, and the lack of care has just really turned me off, and now that we're sliding into uh, my, my closing thoughts, I will watch the rest of this anime, probably once a bunch of it is out, so I can, you know, not follow it on a week-to-week -week basis, but I have to say, honestly, that from the bottom of my heart, this has been a really huge disappointment, the concept for this anime was really interesting, but the writing has been just so poor. But you already know that, it's been a long journey, uh, it's been w very well documented, especially if you watched the previous two episodes. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching something else, uh, definitely. Uh, there's gonna be a new series, I think, I'll probably do a big reaction on another anime relatively soon, but for the time being, though, I wanna thank you for watching. If you have seen these episodes and you have your own opinion, I would love to hear what you have to say. We make it a point here in Dango Duo, we make it a point to reply to everybody's comments, so please let me know. What do you think? What your experience was? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I would love to hear what you have to say. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for tagging along. Leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I really do appreciate it. Check out our Patreon for much more content and for uh, a chance to get into watch our videos early, which is a pretty cool perk uh, if you do decide to support us. But for the time being, thank you for watching. Thank you for tagging along, spending a little bit of your day with me, and I will see you uh, on the next one.